what are twin flames? Hey, so um, twin flames are the same, essentially it's the same soul in two bodies or two people that share the same soul. It's how we're all created. Everyone has and is a twin flame. Why and, and why we're created this way, why we have an aura twin flame is basically it's, it's because it's the divine truth of creation. To understand this, you must first understand the fact that we are beyond, we are more than our physical bodies, we're more than our minds. We are an energy like everything else. And that energy, um, you know, you can call it what you will, I will refer to it as our soul. That energy that we are, our soul, it originates in 5D, which is the fifth dimension. Our physical world of reality is the third dimension, it's 3D. Um, and the energetic paradigm of the third dimension of the physical world is one of duality and opposites. And you can see that in things such as everything has an opposite, up and down, hot and cold, in and out, good and bad, light and dark. You know, we can go on <laughs> forever about that. But um, in 5D, where our soul originates from, um, that isn't the energetic paradigm. There is no duality and there is no opposites. Everything is one. Everything just simply is. Um, you know, so there's no good and bad about it. There's no hot and cold about it or anything like that. Positive, negative, it just is. But in order for our soul, which is energy, which originates in the fifth dimension where everything just is and there's no duality, in order for it to assimilate here and incarnate here when we're born, it, need, it needs to assimilate into um, the energetic paradigm of the third dimension, which is one of duality and opposites. So to do that, it needs to make two opposites of itself. And in energetic terms, opposites are called polarities. So it makes two polarities of itself, one in one physical body, one in another physical body. And those two physical bodies are twin flames. They're the twin flames of the same soul. They're two polar polarities of the same energetic field, which is the soul. So you mentioned how everybody has twin flames. Twin presupposes two. Does that mean that someone can be in a relationship but not with their twin flame. I've got loads of questions just based on what you just said there. <laughs> Does it mean everybody's got a twin flame? Does that mean some people are just not destined to meet their twin flame because they've married somebody else? No, not at all. <laughs> in fact, it's, it's everyone has crossed paths with their twin flame in this and every lifetime. Um, there's billions of people out there who are married to their twin flames, who grew up next door to their twin flames, who work with their twin flames, who, you know, just know their twin flames, see them every morning in the line at Starbucks or something, you know, th there's billions of people out there who, who are in contact and, and know their twin flames. They just don't know yet that they're twin flames and that's fine. Um, so ev everyone can be with their twin flames and know their twin flames, but what really is, is the discerning factor here and what, why it really matters to know that you're twin flames at all is because um, when you start the twin flame journey, and the twin flame journey happens when the soul decides, and this is not a conscious decision. Nobody feels this. Nobody can think it. Nobody can intend for it to happen. Nobody can try to get it to happen. You can't make it happen. Um, but just the soul on the deepest energetic unconscious level, the soul recognizes itself within the physical body of the other twin flame. And at that point, those polarized energies, the one in one twin flames, physical body, and the other in the other twin flames, physical body become activated and they build up. And during that buildup part is when um, the twin flames are like drawn together like magnets physically, right? They, they feel like, you know, they've never, they can't get enough of each other. They've never felt such strong, intense emotions with anyone before. No one else is connected with them like this. They feel a sense of home, all this, right? No one else gets them like that. And that's during this buildup and it feels amazing. It feels intense. But eventually, if the polarities build up to what I call the tipping point, where they then go start manifesting as polarities. And the way the polarities manifest physically is in a push-pull dynamic. So one twin flame pushes their energy onto the other twin flame, while the other twin flame pulls away from the push energy in, in tandem. So as you can imagine, the two physical bodies, they're drawn together like magnets, then these polarities go into to effect, and one is pushing, the other's pulling. So it makes it almost impossible for the two physical bodies to maintain a physical, a physical relating experience for any substantial amount of time while that push-pull energy is going on. Because that energy is just 
way stronger than mind or mental energy. You know, even though they want to be together, that energy is just too strong and it causes them to, to engage in this push-pull relating dynamic. No, that's fascinating. It just reminded me of the movie Hancock, you know, played by Will Smith and uh, his partner. Uh, so he's immortal and his partner and him meet each other and she, she, he, he has amnesia, so he doesn't recognise her. So she tries to avoid him. But when they start getting close to each other, he's a superhero, but he starts losing all his power, his superhero power, and she starts losing it as well. So the only way they can exist is actually way away from each other so oh, wow. so, so, so it, it's definitely well, well worth watching that's another I'll whole point of the movie. yeah yeah definitely check yeah, that movie at hancock will smith and so if you've got a push pull situation well actually let's take a step back is there a particular journey from when someone's born to when they transcend when they die basically is there a particular twin flame journey that uh you know, typically, generally, people go through so that so that our listeners, our viewers, can recognize where they are on that journey. Yes, yes. Um, everyone will eventually go through a twin flame journey if they're not already. Um, I'm fairly certain that there's uh, there's a, a huge proportion of the population on the planet experiencing a twin flame journey, and they just aren't yet aware that that's what that is or that's what they're going through. And there's actually three characteristics that um, that can, well, let me know that people, someone's experiencing a twin flame journey. Um, and they're not the ones that you would actually, like if you Google the signs, you met your twin flame and all of that, all of those things that you find when you when you Google that stuff, all of the, all the good things, you know, like I mentioned, like you feel like you're so connected, like you feel a sense of home, like no one ever gets you like that. Um, all those things can actually be felt with a close resonant soulmate as well. So it does not, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a twin flame. Um, what really makes it a, a twin flame journey is after the two ener the energies have started, um, the, polar the polarities have, have manifested and they get into the push-pull dynamic. Um, how you know it's a twin flame journey is the, the push twin flame is the one that's usually left there. You know, the pull twin flame pulls away. So they either ghost or, you know, block them, cut them off, you know, go run off with someone else or, you know, just out of the blue, <laughs> don't want anything to do with them anymore for, for some reason. Um, so the push twin flame is left there feeling like, like basically their soul's been ripped from their body and they, they have, okay. So this, 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 um, the, the polarity, all polarity, all duality, the whole paradigm that I mentioned of the, of the third dimension, all of that is fear-based energy. Fear-based energy is duality, is polarity, is anything that makes it appear like you're separate or different from, from, from something else, right? So the duality, like for example, you have good and bad or hot and cold or in and out or light and dark or push and pull you know, if, if you're dark, you're not light. It, make, it makes you appear like you're separate. There's a separate, this illusion of separation between things. And I say it's an illusion because in the third dimension, um, it, it's, it, everything's temporary. Everything's in flux. Nothing is permanent here in the third dimension. So it is, it isn't real, you know, compared to the fifth dimension where our souls are eternal. Everything, everything just is, and it's eternal and it's infinite and it's boundless and it's limitless. And so our, the third dimension really is, is a hologram of reflecting back to us, our own personal reality of where we are within ourselves in terms of alignment with our truth, which is our soul, which is actually the point of the twin flame journey, but I'll get into that in a minute before I answer your question. So, um, so the fear-based energy of, of the push-pull you know, the, each twin flame is, is engulfed in this fear-based energy, one in a push type of energy, the other in a pull. This fear-based energy, though, is also the same energy that controls our mind. So one, when, um, one sign of a twin flame journey is that the push twin flame is left there with obsessive thoughts. This push energy can only push onto that, the other twin flame when, while they're pulling away, right? And so it's their focus. The, 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 it controls the mind. So the mind keeps pushing its thoughts onto the pull twin flame. So it's almost like an obsession the push twin flame has with the pull twin flame. So that is one sign. Another sign is that there's something called core wound pain. 
And this is, when I say pain, I mean, it's, it's some kind of sensation. It, it can range, it, there's, a, there's a spectrum of, of the degree of it. So it can range from anything from like a clenching to, um, to like a fluttering to, uh, I don't know, almost like, like, you know, a wrenching type feeling all the way along a spectrum to feeling like you've been completely disemboweled, like your soul has been pulled out of your body and it's just the most painful thing you've ever felt. And anywhere in between, there's, there's, some, there's a wide degree of it, but there's some kind of sensation that you feel that's called core wound pain. And it's felt either in your heart, your solar plexus or your sacral chakra. And this core wound pain tends to flare up or activate or, or become stronger when you're obsessively focusing on, on the other twin flame. So those are, the, those are two signs. And the third sign is actually doubt because doubt is fear, fear is doubt, it's, it's, it's synonymous. And so we work with people, even from my own journey, I mean, all the way through and, and the way we help people with this um, as they work through the process that we teach actually, um, they, you know, their, their obsessive thoughts diminish and their core wound pain deactivates and you know they're feeling amazing they're seeing all these amazing things in their lives their twin flame gets magnetized back in because the soul will naturally pull this twin flame back in when those two enter the push pull is no longer happening um the soul is able to bring its two physical bodies together again but they i mean and you see all this miraculous stuff happening that you thought would never be able to happen and in all areas of your life it just spills over um and yet all the way to the end, all the way until there's no more fear-based energy, which is when we reach ascension, um, there's always these vestiges of doubt. A little bit of doubt will still be there. Like, there's no way this can happen. There's no way this is what's going on. There's no way this person's my twin flame. You know, there's just always this doubt um, that always just lingers there. And it gets it gets less and less as, as you progress along the journey and the process. But, the, you know, it, it's always there until the very end, until you, we call it balance or neutralize the polarities of the push pull. Um, you know, there's always gonna be doubt. So those are the three signs really, is um, obsessive thinking, obsessive thoughts, and, and causing you to do things you might norm not normally do where you don't even recognize yourself anymore, where you're stalking them on social media or stalking everyone they know on social media, especially new people they're dating. You're, you know, you're hitting up their friends and family, trying to figure, find out information about what they're doing, stuff like that, driving by their house, driving by their work, all sorts of things. So there's that with the obsessive thoughts. Then there's the core wound pain, like I like I explained. And then there's the doubt. There's always a little vestige of doubt. So, so for me, I'm seeing a lot of red flags in some of the things that you've <laughs> described. I'll tell you why. You already mentioned that. The stalking thing. I've literally had a number of times over the years had people stalk me, different people, women, who claimed that I'm their twin flame. So... <laughs> well you can only then, have one of them only yeah, one of well, them well, well well this is my point this is my <laughs> point if somebody who is if somebody is unstable for remember a lot of the times people who are unstable don't ever admit that they're unstable never they're, they're, you know uh, it's very you know, they, they need external intervention um isn't there a danger and i'll lead on to the actual question i get to isn't there a danger that you're say you're looking out for your twin flame and you do all that in essence stalk them whether they're in a relationship or not because people from uh, can be extremely obsessive women and men uh from me or from a, you know women um isn't there a danger you'll be stalking and become a danger to them as well as yourself so they might be in a relationship or with a family so we got that but so my big question is how the heck do you even recognize someone's actually a twin flame? In other words, how do you discern between you becoming a nut house, a nut case, to someone who's actually sincerely, genuinely realize that this is your twin flame? Well, that's a really good question. So, um, well, the two other signs I, I told you about, the core wound pain only happens with twin flames. Also, um, uh, the doubt. People, I feel like if, if they're like kind of not on a swimming journey and they're kind of just kind of crazy and they're just stalking someone, um, I don't feel like they have doubt that a person is, you know, could be their twin flame, right? They've convinced themselves in their mind that they are, which is why they're stalking. Exactly. 
this is less of, I mean, yes, the mind is focused on them. And so, but it's like most of these people, most people on the twin flame journey, at least of, maybe not at first, you know, the first month or two, you're like, oh, okay, I want to get them back. I want I wish I could re re reconcile, whatever, but there comes a time where, I mean, you can't function. You can't focus on anything else. It, it's just, it's driving you crazy. You can't focus on your work. You can't do, I mean, like when I went through this, my kid, I was a new, newly divorced single mom. I had two young kids. I couldn't be a mom to them. I couldn't, I just couldn't even function. Um, and yes, yeah, so you get to a point, like at some point where you're, you're just like, that I got to get over this. I got to move on. I got to stop this. And you do things. You try to like cut the cord. <laughs> you try to uh, move on. You try to get over them and you just can't. So it's not like you intentionally, for the most part, people are wanting to be like this. You know, they, they just, they just can't move on. It's like their mind just won't <laughs> let them stop. So um, there's a difference in the intention, so to speak as well. Also, interestingly enough, yes, we, people get in that stalker mode with this and obsessive, but we've never, of all the thousands of people that I've worked with, I've never come across anyone who was ever in a dangerous, you know, way towards their twin flame or, you know, you can go through anger, of course, and frustration and, and of course, sadness and, and depression, but, and even anxiety and panic, but, um, you know, underneath it all, you, you know, you somehow feel that, you know, you feel like, like a love towards them, you know, even though your mind might be like, oh, you know, I'm so upset. And so, you know, how could they do this to me? How could but, you know, there's, there's this knowing within you that, you know, you do actually really care for that person. You know, there is something, I mean, you feel that you're connected, really. So, so what is, is there an, a point or what is the point of a twin flame journey? Yeah, so the twin flame journey is a part of the ascension process. Um, so the whole reason we incarnate here in every lifetime that we've incarnated here from our caveman days all the way through now um, is to learn. And why we have to incarnate into the 3D to learn is exactly what I explained before because of duality. Because in order to learn what something is, we have to learn what something is not. You know, it, it, it's like learn by comparison, basically, um, you know, because if you hold something here, is it up or down? Well, you don't know until you know what up is or down is. Uh, that's how you know what it is. <laughs> Otherwise, it just is, <laughs> which is where we come from in 5D. It just is. So, um, you know, that's duality. It's fear based and, you know, it's an illusion, but it's 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 helped us to learn about um, everything from from, you know, survival of our physical being all the way up through like, you know, intelligence and the industrial revolution and art and all of that all the way now into like technology. And now, um, where, the, where the level of human consciousness has grown to, people are now starting to begin their ascension process, their spiritual ascension process. Um, you know, generally speaking, there have been ascended masters and stuff who have already achieved that, you know, Buddha, Jesus, Mohammed, Confucius, um, you know, archangels, they've all achieved that. But, um, you know, just for the general populace, um, we're now entering this part of um, this level of human consciousness where we're starting our spiritual ascension process, which means we've learned all the lessons about our physicality and our mind. And now we need to do it about our soul and who we truly are. And so in doing that, what, what actually that is, is um, so our soul is, is energy. It's the strongest energy that exists in the universe. It's stronger than anything in this physical world. Um, you know, and including our mind and our thoughts. So, um, you know, it, what it is, is it, it's, it's shifting into that energy and the, and the strongest energy we would say is love. So it's love energy and love. Um, it can't exist. It can't coexist with fear. Um, so our mind and all of our physicality in this 3d world is fear-based energy. So what we're doing, what the twin flame journey shows us to do regarding ourselves, because our twin flame is ourself as far as the soul is concerned, is that push energy that, and it's the push, by the way, it is the push twin flame that always comes looking for the help. The pull twin flame doesn't because they're gone. They can't even focus on any of this, right? It's, it's the push twin flame that goes Googling, what am I going through? And they find us and it's the push twin flame that, that is looking for the help with this journey. So the the twin, the push, to, the pull twin flame, you might think, okay, they're gone. They don't have to do anything. They don't have to get help, but they actually have a role to play. That pull energy, which causes the push energy within the push twin flame, that push energy is fear-based energy. And what the pull twin flame is doing is showing the push twin flame 
it's denied energetic shadow energy, which is that push energy of itself. And then what we teach them to do is to identify it, to see it, to accept it, and then eventually to neutralize it. And what we're actually teaching is transmutation. It's alchemy. We, we teach them how to alchemize their fear-based energy, that push energy into love energy. So it basically gets transmuted into love and absorbed by love. Um, and there's actually in accordance with the universal law, which is the universal law of the um, perpetual transmutation of energy, which states that higher vibration energies transmute lower vibration energies into them. So love is, like I said, our soul is the most strongest energy there is, it's most highest vibration. And it, so it transmutes the fear into it. And so that begins the ascension process where we start balancing out, we call it balancing, but alchemizing our fear into love. And we do it with ourselves regarding the twin flame and twin flame journey. And then by the way, if the push twin flame, every time the push twin flame does balances out the push energy, it also balances out the pull. Because by definition to have polarity, to have push pull, you have to have both. And so as the push twin flame um, alchemizes their fear-based push energy, it also alchemizes the, the fear-based pull energy of the pull twin flame, which then neutralizes their shared energetic field, neutralizes the polarities and the soul can bring them physically together again. That's not the, of course, the point of this journey. The point of the journey is, like I said, to alchemize this fear-based energy into love. And every time we do that, we shift incrementally closer and closer into alignment with our soul, with this love, with, with our truth. And our soul, the love energy, the vibration, it encompasses so many other things, like everything we desire, peace, joy, um, abundance, our purpose, our passions, everything's in that, that energy. Um, of that of who, our truth of who we truly are. And so as we shift closer and closer into alignment with that, it starts reflecting out into our physical world and we start magnetizing in people, situations, things, events, circumstances that, re, that more closely align with our true um, desires and passions. And then, so, hmm. sorry. So, go ahead. No, so that's the twin flame part. And then after that though, there's other, um, we have, well, we're gonna have to eventually, eventually alchemize our fear-based energy regarding everything and everyone else in our physical world, totally in order to reach ascension. So, so it sounds like to me, so in, in essence, um, the whole purpose is for ascension. That's what we're here to do, to support yep. each other individually or separately to ascend. So it sounds like there's a lot of healing going on uh, in the process. You have to, I'm a healer. That's one, I recognize that from a mile off, which is, um, is the healing journey necessary to go through a twin flame? Um, well, is healing necessary to go through the twin flame journey? Well, my teacher said it's not about healing, actually. Um, healing kind of like, like implies that you're um, sick or broken or, you know, something needs to be fixed. There's nothing wrong or sick or broken about anything with the twin flame journey at all. Mm. Um, it's just about really shifting. So it's really about seeing this denied part of yourself that you wouldn't see otherwise without this journey. This, this push energy that the push energy, the push twin flame sees and feels um, is their denied energetic shadow. That's not to be confused with the, with the shadow self or anything that other people talk about. This is just, it's, it's, it's the energetic part of themselves, the fear that they would not normally see. The, the twin flame journey forces them to see it. Um, and then just seeing it, just shedding light on it, just seeing it, just accepting it as it is, is enough to um, really transmute it and alchemize it into love. So it's really just about seeing yourself and getting to know and understand yourself on the deepest level possible. Wonderful. And if somebody never meets their twin flame, let's say, or never spots their twin flame in their lifetime, can they still go through an ascension process? Yes, but yes, of course, but um, our, um, well, not in this lifetime. So there's, I, I don't know that there's very few people on the planet right now who will reach ascension in this lifetime. I just don't know that we're there yet. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there are some, but you know, the majority of people won't. won't. I mean, I know I won't, um, my students won't, but um, there's people who have, I think, started the ascension process having not yet been on the twin flame journey but no eventually everyone in this lifetime or the next will will go through the twin flame journey it's necessary because um like i said you need it to um you know alchemize the fear regarding yourself 
And, and so you wrote a book, um, Twin Flames Exposed. What, what inspired you to write that book? So um, I had just, well, I was going through my Twin Flame journey eight years ago. I didn't know what it was. Eight years ago, Twin Flames wasn't even a buzzword in, in spiritual or woo-woo circles. And, you know, I, I would consult it with like half a, do- with a dozen, like, um, you know, spiritual advisors, psychics, um, a voodoo mambo, all sorts of people. And um, no one could help me. No one even mentioned Twin Flames to me until six months in. And um, I called a psychic hotline again. And finally, this lady mentioned Twin Flames. And I had never heard of it before. Then I Googled it and two things popped up. And one of them was uh, this lady in Australia, Leora. And she became um, my teacher. I signed up with her right then and there. I couldn't function. I, for six months, I was a puddle on the floor. After working with Leora for two weeks, I, I could function again. I, I you know... I could maybe smile within a month. I definitely smiled and I was happy and just back to my normal self. And it was amazing after six months, six months of just getting up and laying on my floor in my bedroom and crying for 10 hours straight, like ice cold tears. I just wanted the universe to take me. It was just, it was just, I, I unreal. I didn't understand anything. And so I worked with her, even though, um, and within three months of working with her, actually my twin flame who had blocked me, told, you know, moved on with someone else supposedly came back in. Um, and then I continued to still work with Leora for, um, for like two years, just, you know, every day for two years, just because I wanted to learn more about this and, and more about, you know, the, the ascension process. And she, um, she was beautiful and amazing. And then two years, um, after I started working with her, she passed over and, um, I realized that, you know, the world was was bereft of any if anyone else was going through this which i knew people had to have been not just me um you know they they were not going to get the benefit of of working with her or her teachings actually it was a year after she passed over that her website was taken down and her teachings were no longer available so um so then i wrote twin flames exposed just as just as a book just to like kind of shed like really clarify what the twin flame journey is about um because by that point um, this is all speeding up so quickly, uh, but by that point, um, there have been all a bunch of myths and, and misconceptions and just downright untruths about Twin Flames surfacing all over the internet. And um, Leora, that was one of her biggest pet peeves, is just, oh, these, you know, ev- everything is being misconstrued about this journey. And it's not, it's actually, and the problem with that is people when people start believing this stuff, that belief in, in this, in this untruths, it feeds the fear-based energy, which you're trying not to, you don't want to do, you know, um, because fear is untruth. So it's all the same thing. So it kind of feeds on itself anyway. So, um, I wrote Twin Things Exposed just, um, you know, to kind of just help people educate, like clarify, um, the most common myths about twin flames that were out there. So one of the myths I want to address here is, and I've heard this being said so many times, is a, very often your twin flame relationship is toxic. So in other words, there's a lot of clashes between twin flames. Um, is that a myth or is that real? Do, do you want to care to explain? Well, that's a really good question. So um, first of all, there's two different relating dynamics that physically can happen between twin flames once the push-pull goes into effect. Okay, one of them is push pull the pull pulls away blocks uh ghosts disappears bye <laughs> right that's one of them the other one though is that um the pull twin flame will pull away for a while then circle back around and come in and out and kind of be in and out and treat uh the push twin flames like life and art like a revolving door um that physically just looking at it on the, just by the physical actions of coming and going and, and leaving and, you know, on again, off again, can resemble a toxic um, relationship physically. The difference is though, is, is the intention. Um, you know, the pull twin flame is never intentionally doing anything to hurt the push twin flame intentionally at all. They don't even realize they're doing it because it's all the energy, the push and the pull. And remember this energy controls the mind. So as soon as the, you know, the pull will pull away. And then um, I guess, you know, the energies, the push comes down a little bit and the pull comes down a little bit enough for them, the pull to come back in, but then it'll build up again as soon as they get back together, you know, it like increases <laughs> like a crescendo and then they pull away again. So but in that, in that act of pulling away, the pull twin flame 
that energy is pulling their mind away from the push twin flame. So they can't even focus enough or plan or manipulate or even focus on the push twin flame at all because mm -hmm. the energy is keeping their mind off of them. Like they can have a fleeting thought, but it's not like they can, they can even focus on that until the energy comes back down again. Right. So it's, there's no, there's no manipulation behind it. There's no maliciousness there. Yes. It hurts on the physical level, but it's not an intentional thing at all. There's no, there's none of that. So how does one, how do you find your twin flame? Well, like I said, most people have probably crossed paths with their twin flames already. Um, and the, the way you, you um, begin the twin flame journey is when you have soul recognition, which is the soul recognizing itself within the physical bodies of the twin flames. Um, and that there's no way you can, there's nothing you can do to make that happen or stop it from happening or, you know, intend for it to happen or manifest it happening. If you manifest your twin flame, that's your energy focusing on your twin flame mentally, it's, that's going to keep them away. You know, the, it's, it's, you can't do it that way. It's all has to happen on the soul level when the soul is ready. That's the only way you can do it. So, so, so you can't sit down, um, put something on a vision board and, you know, do affirmations and all of a sudden your twin flame appears. No, a soulmate for sure not yeah. your twin flame no there's there's no way that can happen um and if you think about it also you know the twin flame is not a separate person a separate being from you um they are you um so to look at it like as wanting wanting to manifest something outside of yourself you what you won't it won't happen because they already are you right right, right. Yeah. And, and and so just to clarify the word twins means usually mean refers to two. Can someone have more than one twin flame? Nope, nope. Everyone has one twin flame and only one twin flame. Okay, great. And uh, I'm, I'm just looking at some of the questions I wanted to ask. And um, so say somebody is, and, and, and this is an important one, I, I really would love for our audience to understand. Say somebody is in an existing relationship. This can happen. They're happy in that relationship. Maybe they've got family. And then they recognize somebody turns up and think, oh, my goodness, this is my twin flame. Do those things happen? And if they do, what do you do in those situations? They recognize someone else as their twin flame, not their, their partner. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's very common. That's a very common scenario. Um, it, it's funny with twin flames. Uh, there's twin flames. They get a lot, of, most of the time, it's very common, it happens um, around relationships that have physical obstacles that would make or break other relationships. You know, for example, one or both are, are in relationships or married to other people. Um, that's very common. Another one is a large age difference is very common amongst twin flames. Another one is um, same sex when neither have been gay before. <laughs> Another one is uh, different races, different religions, di things that would matter, um, you know, in their culture or society or family that, um, you know, they normally wouldn't even think to be with someone like that way. You know, so, I mean? so they're pretty big, big barriers then. Yes. And, and another very common one now, uh, obviously, with, you know, social media and all of that is meeting being on opposite ends of the planet and just meeting um, on social media or chatting or in chat rooms or groups or whatever on social media never even meeting in person and still going through this because that's how strong the soul energy is i mean you don't have to ever even meet physically hmm. to feel this with someone so what happens is um you know it's so strong that most people um and i'm not gonna say all i mean everyone the way it plays out physically is different for everyone um what's going on energetically is exactly the same but um uh you know it, I would say the majority of people that we've worked with, um, you know, who've been with other people with, who have a partner or a spouse, and then they meet their twin flame who isn't that partner or spouse, um, you know, it's just been too strong for them to really, um, you know, not give into, so to speak, and not necessarily sexually, but just, you know, even, you know, they just can't stay away in any regard, like whether they keep talking to them or texting them or, you know, um, yeah, but then eventually what happens is, of course, those energies are going to build up and then one of them goes on the other and then the other one left, the push left um, comes in, uh, you know, and that's where we meet them at. And, you know, they're very um, distraught and upset about their twin flame. Many of them, you know, obviously can't stop thinking about them, want to get over their twin flame. Um, many of them 
want realize make it makes them realize that hey you know maybe my current relationship isn't the strongest or the best for me and many of them choose to um you know take a step that they've been thinking about a while you know that that, hey you know I, i don't belong with this person but they're just there for you know it's convenient it's familiar you know and then they take that this this journey gives them you know i guess the courage or the intention to you know end the relationship they currently are in but really just to then you know learn to love themselves to be on on their own this is a journey of self love and and seeing parts of yourself that you've never seen before and then being on their own and you know it doesn't mean the last thing we tell them to do is to leave any relationship to be with their twin flame because anytime you do anything to be with your twin flame um, intentionally in your mind, that's your energy pushing against your twin so It's not going to happen. It just can't happen, right? This can't happen on a level of, of conscious thought. This journey has to happen on the soul level, the energetic level, which is what we teach people to, to identify and work with. But, you know, so, I mean, there's there's been so many though that come to us and, you know, they have families, they have spouses and they come to us and they bounce out regarding their twin flames. They magnetize their twin flames back in, but yet at that point, you know, they don't. They no longer want choose to be with their twin flame. They want to be with their family, keep their family intact, you know. And it's, they realize they're probably want to more be. stable, right? Oh yeah, for sure. And and it's fine. It's totally perfect. Nobody needs to feel bad or or like they they failed or anything by not being with their twin flame physically. This isn't about a physical relationship. Yes, it's the catalyst. Usually, yes, it's can be an awesome byproduct, but it doesn't have to be. And that's a myth that's out there as well, that twin flames have to come together to have this mission and heal the planet and, you know, do all this stuff. And that really makes people feel like, oh my God, you know, I really messed up here. Like I'm not with my twin flame. I'm letting down the entire universe. Like, you know, it puts a lot of weight on people's shoulders. And yes, there is such a thing as a divine mission, but that happens when both twin flames reach ascension. Again, probably not even in this lifetime for most of us here. Um, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, and when you both reach ascension, you're going to be together regardless. I mean, everything else is going to like fall away and it's just going to be you too because the soul's going to arrange that, right? So it has nothing to do with if you're with your twin flame now physically or you're with someone else, um, that's not going to mess up the divine order of anything or any kind of mission you have or your purpose or anything like that. So, um, so to cool. clarify, 99.9% of the people on the planet, your job is not to fix the world. <laughs> on your own or with your twin flame just and, and i have to say that's also a bit of an arrogance and deluded thought given that there's eight billion people on the planet there are about that you know one person or two people are going to change everything overnight it takes a lot a lot of people to bring the world to the state it's in now so so many questions arising from that one of them i want to explore with yourself you said people come to you you do this and do that so what is it that you specifically do and with whom? Obviously, it's related to Twin Flames. Okay, yeah. So um, what happened was when I published my book, Twin Flames Exposed, I just self-published it on Amazon. And that was that was the intention. People started reaching out to me. And this was in 2017. People started reaching out to me, you know, please help me, please help me, please. I got bombarded by people. I was like, oh, my goodness. And, you know, I didn't know what to do. I... <laughs> I was like, I can't help people. I'm not Leora, you know. Um, I was a lawyer, actually. <laughs> so that just it was the, the dichotomy there. But I just, you know, I was like, I couldn't really turn people away. I tried to help them as best I could. And eventually I started coaching people and it, it turned into this coaching program I have. And now I have, um, I have, what is it? Five, five coaches working under me and um, uh, which were all my students all went through it, all balanced and, and you know, achieved this peace with their journey and their twin flames and, um, so that's what we do. We, we help, we assist people going through this, this journey. I mean, it's, you don't recognize it. It's a very scary journey. It's a very lonely journey. Mm. It's confusing. It's chaotic. It's just, it's, you, you feel like your whole, the rug's been pulled out from under you. Your whole world just suddenly was turned upside down and, and you just can't get over it. You know, it's not like normal heartbreak where, you know, you can heal, get over it. And it's, that's, it, you, there's no getting over this. I mean, mm. we have people who have been married for 20 years and all of a sudden they come in my husband just you know or my wife just left and I, I don't know what happened everything was great we had the best night of our lives six weeks ago and then you know they're gone and you know they just don't understand and they were twin flames but all of a sudden the soul decided to have soul recognition 20 years in and you know they're going through this journey mm. and you know people just it just hits you it blindsides you so that's I, what people. 
I think one of the things people forget is the vows that used to be made hundreds of years ago, which was, you know, you get a couple um, at the altar um, and the priest is saying to love and to hold and all that kind of stuff. Um, and and what what is it? Um, I forget the saying, you know, because I've not even been to it myself, where basically until death do us part. That's a, that's a phrase. But 150 years ago in the UK, anyway, the uh, average life expectancy was about 42 for women and 38 for men. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So so when somebody got married at, say, 25, they got 15 to 17 years together. So the journey is going to constantly. Sh- I mean, now people live to 70, 80, past 100. So there's a good chance that you're going to have more than one soulmate. So speaking of soulmates. What's the difference between a soulmate and a twin flame? Yes, I'm glad you asked. So a twin flame, like I, like we've discussed <laughs> ad nauseum, <laughs> is one soul with two bodies. A soulmate is just like it, like it implies to the mate of your soul. So it's another another soul, another person with another soul that is a mate with your soul that resonates with your soul on to some degree or other. Now there's a misconception also that soulmate is just a romantic. Um, type of, of, of person with you, right? Like you have a romantic connection, but um, that's not, that's not the case. Every other, every other living being that you resonate with is a soulmate of yours to some degree or another. Yes, there can be romantic ones, lovers and stuff like that. Uh, but they're also family members are soulmates, friends are soulmates, even pets and animals can be soulmates. So um, yeah, there's any, any other person, any other being that you resonate with and you resonate with anyone that comes into your physical world in some way or another, like even that, that person that cut you off in traffic, <laughs> you resonate with them from in a little tiny bit in order for them to even show up in your physical reality or not reality, but you know, your physical world. One of the things I'm going to do is I've, I've taken some questions from my listeners and I've asked them in advance. Um, and one of the questions I'm going to put to you, um, this lady is actually from LA and uh, she'll know who she is so i won't mention the name in case she wants to keep it private she said for the soulmate i have had several soulmates in my life none of them appropriate or worked out for long-term relationship like my best friend who i consider a soul connection each of them was an on an uh, was an instant powerful karmic connection i am very evolved and loving can you suggest any process to manifest a soulmate appropriate for marriage that's a big question (laughs) <laughs> you can manifest a soulmate that's for sure um the way i like to do manifestation is i don't do it through the mind um again you can't manifest a twin flame i just want to put that out there that's this is not for twin flames okay this is not gonna work for but for anything and everyone else um is to you know kind of drop into my i call this um you know, your heart space, I call it, um, this is like your soul, where your soul is seated, to kind of drop into your heart center. And by that, I mean, your awareness, go there, get out of your mind, um, you know, however way you want to do that, if you want to meditate or whatever, but, you know, not listening to meditation, but just kind of like get still present into your heart center. And, um, you know, while you're there, just try to feel, feel the feelings of your heart center. It might just be, um, a piece. It might just be, sometimes you can feel almost, um, I don't know, tingling or, or, uh, even all the way to like almost an orgasmic feeling. Um, but if you can t- tune into those and it might take some practice, but just to be present and to get there in that area of peace and safety and security. And while you're there, that's your truth. And when you're in your truth, your soul, you're radiating that is your soul and you're radiating your soul energy, your, your truth out there, out there into the universe. Like when you're, when you're in that space, you know, like law of attraction says, you know, you radiate out, which is, which is fine. It is universal law. And so when you radiate that out, you're going to um, attract it in. And there's also another universal law that isn't mentioned very much, but it's, it's, I think it's, I'm all, they're all equally important, but I think in regarding um, intentional manifestation, it's very important. And that is the law uh, of correspondence, which basically says as within, so without. So the longer that you can maintain a state of presence, which is calm, which is peace, which is secure feeling, which is um, 
you know, and that is actually true happiness. We like to think happiness is, um, you know, feeling like that ecstatic, that excitement, that, but that's actually fear. So that's not happiness, you know, that because it's temporary. True happiness is, is a calm, is a peacefulness um, that is in your, that is your soul. And the longer you can like be there throughout the day or whenever, um, you know, the more that's going to be reflected in your physical world in whichever physical shape or form your soul decides to bring it in for you because your soul is orchestrating everything. Our minds don't like to hear that, um, but our soul is orchestrating everything. It's more powerful than our mind, remember. So even things that we think are bad, that our mind is judging as bad or good are really just, um, they just are happening for a reason. Um, so it's not, nothing is good or bad. It's just, and that reason is to realize that, to realize that nothing, I, hey, my mind's judging this, but what is bad for me, actually someone else could think is good. So it's not the thing or the person that's, that's ever good or bad that comes in. It's just our judgments of it. And so that's a very important thing to do as well. When something comes in to realize, okay, um, it is what it is, you know, and accept it and not resist it by judging it as good or bad. If that, if that resonates. Yeah, that totally makes sense to me. What you resist persists. And if you're, I think, there's this thing of, for anybody, it's a sense of, I need to be with a soulmate. It, it, it almost like pushes the person away. There's this need in this energy. And then, which actually, this will lead to the next question, because uh, I, I think I'll complete my sentence when I hear what your answer is. People talk about your twin flame is your mirror. What do they mean by that? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so they say it's your mirror, um, but in how it actually works is I like to call it a reverse mirror for lack of a better term. But so the mirror thing is, is kind of misleading because you think, oh, my twin flame is doing this. My twin flame likes this. That means I should like that. I should be doing that. But it's not, you and your twin flame do not share the same personality. That's all fear-based, that's all phys physicality. You share the same soul. So what, how the twin flame is your mirror, they show you a part of yourself. Remember, they show you that push energy. So whenever the twin flame comes in, the fear-based push energy feeds up onto that, onto the twin flame. And so that's what they're showing you, that fear-based push energy I talked about. That's the part of their self they're showing you. So that's the reverse mirror. You don't see yourself out there. They're showing you this part of you to see within here, which is your fear-based push energy. So for anybody uh, watching and listening and you want to find out more about L. Uh, first of all, you can get hold of the book. I'll put the links um, to the book in the show notes. And if people wanted to get hold of you, say, for example, they want to be taken through your course, through your program with either yourself or your, uh, or your other coaches, um, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Or, or what, what can they do to connect with you, actually? Sure. Yeah, they can visit our website, bewithyourtwinflame.com. And there's, you know, buttons on there to schedule um, a free clarity consultation. That's what I would suggest they do. Also, any of our social media, we have a link tree link, um, our Instagram, be with your twin flame, the link in the bio. There's a whole list of ways they can get help, um, you know, reach out to us. Uh, we always offer a free 15 minute clarity consultation. So if you're confused, if you don't know if you're actually experiencing a twin flame journey, one of our clarity coaches will, will speak with you for 15 minutes and meet with you and they, they'll be able to tell you right away what's going on. If you are on a twin flame journey, where you're at in your journey, how we can best help you. Um, and so there's a lot. Plus, there's a lot of content. If, if you'd like to learn more, there's a lot of introductory videos explaining, going more into depth of what kind of we talked about here um, um, on our website, beautyourtwinflame.com. Also on our YouTube channel, Be With Your Twin Flame, and on our Instagram, Be With Your Twin Flame, and Facebook. Um, my face, the Facebook page is El Hari. It's my, it's a um, public figure page or whatever, but um, all of those, those three areas, they have, we have a lot of free content. We're always posting more content um, just to educate um, people about this journey. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you're watching this video and you're still here watching it at this point, then it sounds like you have some kind of interest in it, then do go and explore. And I, and, and I look at it because I'm very much a healer therapist using integration of science and uh, spirituality and consciousness. There are things that once upon a time, science could not explain and now explains really well. But then there are also way more things like twin flames where it's not measurable with scientific equipment. 
So, you know, the research hasn't been done, but the ancient wisdom is there through practice, through, um, uh, through guidance and so on. So, you know, do be open-minded and explore. It's okay to be cynical because my, my questions that I ask, I always ask with a skeptical mind, not in the sense that I don't believe you, but it's more like, show me, help me understand. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's, that's how I learn. That's how I grow. So in your book, Twin Flames Exposed, you mention chasers and runners. Is that the same as what you said, push me, pull me, pull, push, pull thing? Yeah, so that's a myth that you have to go through, first of all, stages and phases. And one of these stages is the runner chaser stage or phase mm. or whatever. There's no steps, stages, phases. The soul doesn't work like that. Mm. That's how the mind works chronologically. There, in fact, there is no chronological order in the, in the soul because there's no such thing as time. Because when you're timeless and eternal, there's no time. So that's all physical world mind thing. And remember, this journey cannot be approached from that perspective. That's one thing ascension does actually. It lifts us up out of that perspective of um, the fear-based perspective of everything. Um, and this journey must be done from not the fear-based perspective. It just can't be done on that level. This is on a soul level journey, which is why it's so <laughs> challenging and different, difficult for people. Um, but yeah, so the, the runner's chasers, why that's a myth. Yes, yeah, so the push-pull, um, I think that's what they're, they're kind of explaining happens is that kind of di you know dynamic, but um, but you know just the the runner chaser um, name for it it just it implies that someone is doing something like they're intentionally running and someone else is intentionally chasing. When when you're in this journey, that's not what's going on. Remember, it's nothing with the mind. It's not intentional. It's the energy that's doing it. And no one is choosing to run. No one is trying to run. Nobody is trying to chase or trying to stalk or wants to do this. You know, it's it's the energy that they that's just so strong that you know just just takes them away with it. You know, mm. so I feel like the runner chaser uh, terminology just just you know it implies you know intention and um, that you know people are actually doing it you know from what they want to do and that, that's not that's not the case at all so why is there so much pain associated with a twin flame relationship to wake you up to right. show you that this is something different that it's your soul's way of it's a wake-up call you know like an alarm clock doesn't feel great when you're in the middle of a great dream but you know it has to be loud and in your face and uncomfortable to get your attention right this is, it's, it's exactly why, because you need, you need to realize, hey, this is something, something different going on here. This isn't a normal heartbreak. This isn't a normal breakup. There's something different is, this is something different and I need to pay attention. And that's why there's so much pain. Can a twin flame relationship be the opposite of pain, which is like blissful and amazing without all the pain that you mentioned? Because to wake you up but then does that mean presuppose you're just not fully awakened if you if there's no pain well and before they have soul recognition like i said billions of people are with their twin flames right now probably and have no idea so yeah it can be like that but all the pain comes from fear-based energy so really there's going to be some kind of pain there because there's always fear-based energy when you're relating with someone physically until you go on the twin flame journey. And like right now, twin flames with each other are where the level of human consciousness is, is the only absolute fearless relating experience you can have with anyone else is your twin flame. Once you go on the journey and once you alchemize that, that fear. Um, and so once you do that, yes, it must be that way. It has to be that way. Twin flames cannot physically relate once they're on the journey with any fear there at all. So can you be with your twin flame without all the pain? Yes. Like, for example, um, remember, I said like billions of people in the world are with their twin flames now and they don't even know it. And, you know, so they're not really feeling pain necessarily, although any um, type of physical, um, you know, feeling any type of physical relationship is fear based a relationship. Because um, right now where the level of human consciousness is, um, it's actually impossible to have a fearless relationship with anyone else other than your twin flame. And that can only happen once you have been on the twin flame journey and you've alchemized all of the fear-based energy between you and your twin flame. Um, and then that's the only way though. Once you have embarked on the twin flame journey, that's the only way that you can have a sustained, stable, relation, physical relating experience with your twin flame is if it's totally fearless. 
Um, and all of that fear-based energy is, has been alchemized because otherwise that push pull goes into effect, like I've been describing. Um, and, you know, then you won't be able to have the physical relating experience with your twin flame. And, you know, but, and so that's actually true love, you know, fearlessness is love. Love is the opposite of fear. Um, so really other relationships that we have, like physical relationships with people, it, we can say we love them and, and we have, we do have a notion of love. We intend to love them. But um, that's a fear-based definition of love, which is fine because, you know, throughout all of our lifetimes and previous lifetimes in humanity, you know, we've come up with, you know, what love is in our mind, but really love is in our mind is fear. So it's going to come from that fear-based perspective, but, you know, really love doesn't take place in the level of fear. It's fearlessness. And that is our soul. And, um, you know, so love, for example, doesn't have, um, you know, conditions. It doesn't have um, rules. You know, it's not possessive. Even, um, you know, monogamy, for example, you know, I don't want to get into the whole, this whole debate, but, you know, monogamy, we're, we're not a monogamous species. Biologically, we're not. Um, and monogamy is actually a rule placed on relationships somehow back in, you know, at some part of humanity placed on relationships when you love someone, you know, but that's actually a condition and it's actually a rule and really love doesn't have any of that love is free, love is freedom. So, you know, when you're with your twin flame at once you've been on this journey and stuff, you can't be in a relationship like any other, like you don't have rules, you don't have constraints and stuff. That doesn't mean you're both like out with anyone else, because if you don't have the rules and you have the love, you have no desire to be with anybody else. But, you know, it, it comes from, it, it can't be because there, you have rules set about it. This, I don't know if that resonates. No, but. no, no totally. Because uh, it's, what it sounds like to me is that the magnetism between yourself is so intense it becomes truly unconditional but because of the magnet intensity of the magnetism you don't stray towards others you you're just only pulled towards yourself and yet you don't have the rules confining you um and getting you to conform to you know um whatever the rules are so right, totally exactly. totally get it so a couple of more questions are there any any other benefits any core benefits you may have not have mentioned being in a twin flame relationship benefits um yes oh well for example you you have this amazing beautiful you mean what after after you've been on the journey uh -huh. yeah you have this be amazing beautiful actually unconditionally loving you know relationship with someone we are just in this energetic space of complete acceptance and tenderness and um like just almost like mutual awe of each other where you don't even need to speak. <laughs> you don't even need words most of the time. Like, it's just really hard to explain because there's nothing to compare it to because, you know, we can't get there with anyone else, but yet. Um, but, you know, when we reach ascension, we'll be like that with everything and everyone. But there's other benefits as well outside of that relationship that this journey totally, um, you know, gifts you with. And that would be, first of all, like I said, you are shifting closer into alignment with your truth. And every little tiny shift makes huge difference in your physical world. And so um, when the more you're aligned with your truth, which is everything you desire, the more you're gonna magnetize into your physical world, manifest, however you wanna say it, um, more uh, people, situations, events, things, circumstances that resonate and that align with what you truly desire. So, I mean, opportunities come in, more financial abundance happens, you know, you recognize or your purpose finds you. That's what happened with me, obviously. This has been my purpose. Um, you know, just, just so many things happen. I mean, you toxic relationships with other people just fall, toxic people fall out of your life without there being any drama. They just kind of leave. And, you know, new relationships and new people come in that, that you just resonate with so much more. And with them, more opportunities just to really fulfill your, your passions and your purpose. And it's just, it's just beautiful. Yeah, it, it, amazing benefits happen in all areas of your life. So it puts you in your true essential power, your essential nature. And what, what other, I mean, so many people are trying to be like everybody else, that they're actually moving away from who they are. And in essence, uh, I'm getting that being with your twin flame or, or an amazing soulmate as well, it, it puts you back into your true power and everything that comes with it. Beautiful. Yes, now, or, oh, go I'm ahead. sorry. Go ahead. Also, I just want to put in there, or by, or by yourself. Um, here's the thing. You can't, you can't, to be completely fearless with your twin flame, 
fearlessness um, means you don't have an attachment to anyone. Fearlessness means you totally love, you're, you're in complete love. That means you love yourself first. And that means when you're in that space, you just automatically, you, you crave your solitude. You enjoy being alone. Um, like during the lockdown with the pandemic, me and all my students, we loved it. We had no issues like being alone, not, not, not having to like, you know, go out with people. And, and it was very hard for like a lot of people in the world, you know, a lot, of men, a lot of people had mental health issues with that and stuff, understandably, because fear-based energy, it needs other people. It needs, it needs that. You, it, it doesn't look too within, it looks without. Whereas when, when, as you shift closer into alignment with your truth and, you're, and into love, you feel just whole and complete within yourself. You don't need anything or anyone. And you know that's the paradox of it all, actually. Once you get to that space, first of all, regarding your twin flame, that's when your twin flame can be there. And only then, when you no longer need or want them there. You know, mm. I mean, you desire them still on a soul level, but your, your mind's not wanting them. And also with everything else, you know, when you no longer feel like you need, um, you know, a lot of money, all of a sudden it's going to come in. You know, when you feel like you no longer need, you know, I don't know, a big house or whatever, there is going to be the opportunity for you to have one, you know, whatever, anything it is that you can think of when you feel like you no longer need it. And you're just good and you're whole and complete right now in this moment in presence, that's when it all comes in. Um, yeah. So it's, it's really getting the, that space with yourself where you, where you're good with yourself. And so therefore um, you don't mind being alone. You actually crave it. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So this brings so nicely to the close of the uh, the show. So for anyone who wants to get in touch with Elle, then click on the links and uh, they're all there. And also, so if, is there any question that maybe you would have asked if you were sitting in my shoes? Have I missed anything? Is there any question you would have liked for me to have asked? And what would it be if you did have a question? No, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um Oh, I don't really know. I think we pretty much covered it all, to be honest with you. I'm trying to think of questions we get a lot of. Um, I don't know. I really just want to drive home the point, though, that if anyone is feeling like, you know, they're, they're stuck in heartbreak, um, you know, they, they want to get their ex back, they can't get over an ex, they can't um, move on, you know, they're just in despair and depression about that, to really seriously consider that, that the Twin Flame journey is, it could, it could be going on, it's being on a twin flame journey. Um, and, you know, that just hasn't come to their awareness yet. But there is help if that's the case. Actually, this helps with any kind of, re, any kind of anything. You can apply this and alchemize fear-based energy regarding anything and anyone in your life. So it's, it's actually um, a useful tool for anything, any area of life. So fear can be alchemized. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Al, thank you. You've been an absolute amazing guest. And I uh, hope we connect again soon. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye for now.